Welcome back everybody to another episode of Movie Social. I am your host, Ricky. And it's that time again where we uh, discuss episode three of season three for The Shy. Got some more information going on in this episode, so sit back and enjoy it. Now, as always, if you uh, did watch the episode, please uh, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. Anything that you guys think needs to uh, change in the show, anything like that, any comments about it, any of that, just put it all in the comments down there. And then, of course, if you like my show here, don't forget to subscribe and also that thumbs up, that like. Alright, so, episode three for this guy starts off, of course, with them now finally passing out flyers and stuff about Keisha since she's now been missing a total of seven days. Three episodes equals seven days on the show. Okay. We're finally getting some form of timetable on this show. Because I know we jumped from season two to season three and it's like this big time gap. Like, are we still within the same year? Just at the other end of the year? Or are we in a new year? In the spring? Because we obviously can tell it's not fall or winter yet. Because there's no jackets, no coats, nothing on. It still seems nice and hot there in Chicago. So if it was fall or winter, it'd really start being cold. So it has to be spring or the end of summer, getting ready to go into fall, because it's still during the school year. So we know Keisha's about to graduate this year, so she's in 12th grade now. Who knows? Maybe they might answer those questions. But I'm lie. Hopefully so. If not, that's not a bad. That's not a good thing. That's a bad look. But anyway, so we've seen a bit happening going on. We finally found out that Keisha had a second Instagram, a more uh, private hidden one from her parents, one where she was uh, being a little bit wild. Eh. It's crazy, but it did shed a light on something that a lot of us do know, that as being black, if you, if you as a black person, child, adult, go missing, you're not flashed around and, and, or paraded in the media just like if it was a white child but if you commit a crime oh your your face is plastered everywhere it doesn't really bode well in my opinion I like the fact that the show did keep that part true I mean it would have been hard to really go against that I mean and then we seen the dynamic of the support group how, to me, few of the members really were iffy, if you ask me, towards uh, how they portray what they think the group should be doing, which in my opinion, if you, it was your child, you'd be wanting the same thing, so why does it matter? And we've seen a little bit more into the dynamic of... Uh, Papa's parents, oh, just just a bit. Well, more so his dad though. First time really seeing the church, more so environment with Papa and his dad. After Ronnie, whew, Ronnie, 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 get starts to get beat up by kids, going back in his old neighborhood. Which I get it. That's where you grew up, so you want to be there. But you, nobody is had time to heal from the tragedy that he caused. Granted, he was suffering from tragedy himself, but it didn't give him the right to take someone else's life. And it turned out to be the wrong person at that, going off of information that didn't pan out 100%. One thing I really want to have them explore more on the show, what happened to the cops? All the cops that was involved in the show, it's like they disappeared thus far. It's three episodes and nothing. 
to do with him at all. No investigation still going on with Duda, none of that. But we did get to see a little bit more of Jake's brother and start to see their relationship just a bit start to form very so slightly. And we got to experience maybe some that there's possibly some traumatic background to his girlfriend's life, possibly. Well, maybe we'll find out more about that later. But I personally have a strong feeling that she's going to do something to go back into the house, try to get those girls out. And that's another thing. I was a little shocked to see it the uh, sex trafficking. Trap house, as you want to call it. To me, it's plain old sex trafficking. I don't care skin color, whatever. To me, it was sex trafficking. Especially after the one female said, uh, and hey, she's here, she's not going to be here freely. It's basically against her will. To me, that's sex trafficking. They explored that a little bit. We'll probably be exploring more into that place probably down the line in the season. We'll see. But really was kept tight to a few groups this time. It wasn't like episode one where we caught up all the players on the show. I mean, we did explore a little bit more of Emmett. Man, I, I tell you, Emmett, he got to grow up. And so they're back with, the, with his mom. Him, Keisha, and, well, I'm sorry. Him, Tiff, and the baby. Back with a smile and arguing first thing in the morning. I mean, I get it. Yeah, you up all night trying to get a business plan out, which he needs to really seriously get things together. And I want to know if he's going to get busted for using the shop at night. Is this going to wind up leading him getting caught? Is he going to wind up sleeping with his business partner? Or is he going to stay faithful to Tiff? And then the whole part with me with Tiff, oh, I'm a uh, drug woman. I'm a business lady. Hmm. So that's, a, I mean, yeah, it's a business if you say so. But um, the way she was going about it, it was like she was going to a work and order building to handle business. But eh. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out as well. She get cordons up into something down the line of uh, her weed selling, or does she stay fine? Gotta find out. I mean, each episode is bringing more questions to me than I have gotten answers out of it. I really can't wait to see what happens later on in the season to see if they start answering a lot more questions. And then the one big thing that they really left us kind of a bombshell thing at the end of the episode. Who was the person that Ronnie was chasing after at the uh, candlelight visual? Person who was very either white or light skinned. Did the person have something to do with Keisha's disappearance? Don't know. Gotta wait to find out. But all in all, the episode was okay. It really wasn't. So much going on, wasn't a lot of things answered, had more questions being brought up because of this episode, but hopefully things get answered down the line, but I don't know, what did you guys think? Did you like it? Was it something that you really are starting to get tired of watching? Or were you like me and having more questions than answers coming out of the episode? I don't know. You guys let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Until next time, see ya.